Are we ready? Ready. Going live in five, four, three, two, one. Good evening. Welcome to the June 13th, 2024 Rental Housing Committee special meeting. For those joining us in person, please note that due to our hybrid environment, audio and video recordings can no longer be shared from the lectern. Requests to share an audio or video presentation during a Rental Housing Committee meeting should be directed to mvrent at mountainview.gov by 4.30 p.m. on the meeting date. The meeting is called to order at 7 o'clock p.m. Now I will proceed with roll call. All present? All committee members are present. Uh, we'll now go on to the consent calendar. These items will be approved by one motion unless any member of the committee wishes to remove an item for discussion. The purpose of the consent calendar is for the committee to efficiently and quickly consider routine or administrative business items with one motion. Public comment will occur after the discussion. We invite you to submit a speaker card now if you would like to speak on this item during public comment. Would any member of the committee like to pull an item? I see that this item was moved by committee member Cox and seconded by Vice Chair Ma. We now invite public comment. Can I get a uh, elevated to a uh, presenter? Thank you. All right. uh, seeing no public comment, I think it's time to vote. Motion passes. We are so efficient. Oh, actually, I think uh, Commissioner Cox, did you read the uh, the text? Yep. It is to, to approve the minutes for the May 23rd, 2024. Uh, wait, uh, Mike. I make a motion to approve the minutes for the RHC meeting of 23rd May, 2024. Perfect. And that was moved, seconded, and passed. All right. We will now open the meeting for oral communication from the public. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons wishing to address the committee on any matter not on the agenda. Speakers are allowed to speak on any topic for up to three minutes during this section. State law prohibits the committee from acting on non-agenda items. Would any member of the public like to provide comment on a non-agenda item? If you would like to speak on this item in person, please submit a speaker card to city staff now. In-person public comments will be called to speak first. Any member of the public wishing to provide a virtual comment on this item, please click the raised hand button in Zoom or press star nine on your phone. Staff will display a countdown timer on the screen. Seeing no speakers, we move on to new business. Agenda item 5.1, fiscal year 2024-25 budgets and annual fees for the Community Stabilization and Fair Rent Act and Mobile Home Rent Stabilization Ordinance. Public comment will occur after the presentation item and committee questions. We invite you to please submit a speaker card now if you know you would like to speak on this item during public comment. We will begin with a presentation from staff. Thank you, Chair Brown, and good evening, committee members. Item 5.1 is the um, annual budget for fiscal year 2024-25 and annual fees for the Community Stabilization and Fair Rent Act, as well as the Mobile Home Rent Stabilization Ordinance. And the purpose of this presentation is for the committee to consider adopting a resolution of the Rental Housing Committee of Mountain View approving the fiscal year 2024-25 budgets for the Community Stabilization and Fair Rent Act and the Mobile Home Rent Stabilization Ordinance, as well as establishing the rental housing fee and the space rental fee for the fiscal year. The um, CSFRA section 1709D and 1709J, as well as MHRSO section 
empowers the RHC to establish a budget for the reasonable and necessary implementation of the provisions of these rent stabilization programs to finance its reasonable and necessary expenses and to charge an annual fee. On May 23rd, 2024, the Rental Housing Committee reviewed the recommended budgets for the CSFRA and the MHRSO and supported the proposed budget with no changes. On June 11th, 2024, the City Council also supported the fiscal year 2024-25 recommended budget. This includes the request for the new Senior Management Analyst position. Council will adopt the budget on June 25th. And just a brief reminder here, the recommended budget for the CSFRA is an operating budget of $2.3 million. And you can see the breakdown of that, um, the expenditures for the coming fiscal year as uh, estimated by staff. And the CSFRA is a 100% cost recovery program fully paid for by the rental housing fee. This is how the calculation breaks down and the fee this year is proposed to be $120 per unit as um, discussed at the prior meeting in May. As for the MHRSO, the operating budget is $320,000 and you can see the breakdown of that budget here. And the proposed fee, again, this program is fully cost recovery paid by the space rental fee and the proposed fee for the coming fiscal year is $285 per unit. The fiscal impact of adopting the budget for the CSFRA and MHRSO will provide appropriations for the operation of the CSFRA and MHRSO for the fiscal year 2024-25. The adoption of the budgets also authorizes the billing and collection of fees provide for the resource, financial resources to recover the costs of the program. Both rent stabilization programs are 100% cost recovery and fully funded. And I do wanna note here that the final budget will be modified to include any labor contract changes adopted at the June 25th, 2024 City of Mountain View public hearing uh, city council meeting. And the final staff recommendation is for the RHC to adopt a resolution of the Rental Housing Committee of Mountain View approving the fiscal year 2024-25 budgets for the Community Stabilization and Fair Rent Act and the Mobile Home Rent Stabilization Ordinance and establishing the rental housing fee and the space rental fee for fiscal year 2024-25 to be read in title only further reading waived. And this includes staff's presentation on this item. I'm happy to take any questions uh, at this time. All right, thank you so much. All right, it is time for committee questions. So please hit the request to speak if you have any questions. I'll wait for the screens to flip over. Uh, yes, so questions to staff, public comment, and then deliberation. Go for it. Okay, yeah, I just had one question back about the um, City Council's approval of our budget. How exactly does that work? I mean, I thought that the RHC was a, a relatively independent entity when it came to that. that that's correct. Um, but the, the budget of the Rental Housing Committee is part of the overall budget of the City Council. Um, so you decide what your budget is going to look like, and then it's being taken into account with the whole City uh, Council budget. But because our Budget is totally covered by fees. It has no impact on the rest of the city's um, budget. Okay, thank you. Member Keating. Thank you. So reading from one of the slides, <clears throat> it says the final budget will be modified to include any labor contract changes adopted uh, at the June 25, 2024 City of Mountain View public hearing. So could I just hear a little more explanation of that? Well, we're currently in negotiations about the salaries of all employees for the coming three years. And just to follow up, so if there is a salary change, it will not be a fee change, it will just adjust the budget. Yes, that's Thank correct. You. Member Balch? Yeah, so a follow-up. That's actually a really interesting point. Let's say that there is a salary change, but previously you just said that 
the, um, that these programs are paid in full by the fees. So wouldn't the fees have to adjust to account for the salary changes? Yeah, so salary changes, it, it means actually just the annual increase of the COLA. So it doesn't mean like all of a sudden. Oh, it would be for next year, let's yes, say. Got yes, yes. Thank you. So additionally, the um, finance department has taken into account the estimated increases. So hypothetically, hopefully, we already are capturing those increases. Actually, I've got a related question. Uh, because we have a reserve in excess of the amount, if there were to be a sudden you know, crisis situation that led to our staff getting paid more, we would be able to cover that between the, the years without having to increase the fee and then rebuild the reserve after? Okay, thank you. That's correct. All right. For some people. <laughs> Uh, so seeing no further questions of the committee, we'll open it for, to public comment. Uh, if you're participating via Zoom, please hit the raise hand button or star nine. All right. Seeing no comments, we'll move to deliberation. Member Balch. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, I wanted to thank the staff very much uh, for not only your work preparing the budget, but for the consultation uh, that we did uh, the last week, which was super helpful to help me understand uh, how things are are set up, and uh, I think the uh, I think you all did a really good job. Um, the rental housing committee is responsible to the community, and all the decisions we make are to administer benefits to the community in line with the. Um, CSFRA and the MHRSO. Uh, and of course, every benefit in life has a cost. And so I believe that the Rental Housing Committee has an ongoing responsibility to assess benefits in context of their cost and understand that each of our decisions and votes has an impact uh, both on the benefits and on the costs of the programs that we then uh, direct the staff to execute. Uh, on behalf of the community. Um, <clears throat> so digging into the uh, budget and the staffing plan, uh, what I learned is that, so the staff is making what I consider good use of what I'll call staff augmentation for temporary workloads. So for example, the RUBS program is not a permanent uh, workload on the staff. It is gonna be around for let's say a year or so, a year or two, whatever it is, and so, we're not hiring a full-time person to manage that process. We are properly using temporary workers of various forms to administer the RUBS transition, and that will eventually sunset, and those people will either not be needed anymore or they will be used for a different uh, uh, set of tasks that we might vote on in the future. There is a full-time supervisor in the budget, and that person is needed to manage these temporary employees and perhaps other employees, which again makes sense to me, is that people don't just show up and randomly start working. You need a manager or a supervisor to look after them. So that makes a lot of sense as well. <clears throat> and so uh, staff also had prepared a comp table, which at some point will be shared or, or or disclosed, there's nothing uh, proprietary in there or, or confidential, but it basically shows the cost of Mountain View's program in relation to other cities in California. Uh, and when, when we look at the uh, relative sizes of the, of the communities, we come in uh, pretty well in that there. So, the staff is doing a good job, and a, but again, it is in service of what the Rental Housing Committee votes for. And until now, I don't believe that we've really ever gotten a view of the cost of our decisions. So I've been part of the deliberations for several months now where we look at all sorts of ranges of simple to complex rules and we debate, we have debated, lots of details around all the variables we want to take into account for 
establishing fairness and uh, rates, whether it's for utilities or, or other things. And I think this is a reminder that every time we add another variable and we try to engineer our way around something, that increases cost, and that is ultimately something we are accountable for. And so moving forward, uh, I had requested, and my understanding is that as we deliberate and consider additional policies as part of our work in the coming months and years, that staff will be providing some sort of a estimate of what it will actually cost to implement the decisions that we make. And I encourage that. I think it's actually super important because, again, we have an obligation to make sure that we're delivering benefits to the community and those benefits are uh, balanced with a certain cost. And I think being exposed to the cost of our decisions can help guide us to make sure that we're making the right decisions and we could see is, is the complexity worth it? Do we need to take a simpler approach or should we go for all those variables in the name of fairness, right? So I, I welcome that and uh, so I support this, this budget and I also am, am really looking forward to being able to look at the cost of what we implement uh, as, we, as we proceed in the future. So thank you very much to the staff. Member Cox. Thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was actually surprised this week that I had several people call me up, okay, and talk to me about, you know, this, as you're saying, like, this is an 11% increase in the CSFA, CSFRA budget, you know, at a time when the inflation is lower. And what do you think about that? And what do you see about, what's your comment about that? Because you said you believed in fairness when you applied for this position. So I want to take a minute to uh, reply to that. Um, and the first thing I would just say is, you know, I, I think it's a laudable thing for a us to have a goal as far as where the budget goes. And I do think that in what I would consider a, a steady state situation, and I don't know if we'll ever get to that. I mean, you know, it's a laudable goal to try to say, look at the AGA and then look at what our expense increase is gonna be and try to equal, be equal to that or lower to that. I mean, that, but that's just a goal. And then I think we need to look at extenuating circumstances. So the next thing I would say is that as I heard, what I heard last time we were here in the study session was, you know, there's been an increase in the tenant petitions and landlord appeals, and that's definitely true because we've seen more of the appeals come in here than we saw before, and that's responsibility of the committee, and we need to do that. And whatever the cost is, that's for a requirement. A second thing is, is that there's a need to fund the RUBS transition. Um, as uh, committee member Balch just mentioned, it is a temporary thing, and I think staff has wisely decided to fund it through primarily temporary workers, and so that's the right thing to do, but still, it's an additional cost, and that needs to be absorbed as well. Um, and then the third thing is that, you know, we need to more completely monitor CSFRA compliance, especially on the registration of units. And that was an area that for many years, I mean, we didn't even come close to having half of the people sign up. And we need to get to that point where we're 90 plus. And, you know, there's new systems going in place. And we need to pay for that too. So this again shows for me, this is not what I would call a steady state year. And therefore, I think that in this case, um, you know, the additional funds are justified. Um, but yeah, I will echo that, you know, um, something I was told by a friend of mine years ago, okay, I remember going to down to the Tide House and, um, you know, I asked, it was being sponsored by Google and I asked, you know, uh, this was for a, um, a, a compiler get together meeting, okay, I mean technical meeting. And they had food there, and I said, well, how does it work with food? Do I order my own food, and do I pay for my own food? Because Google had a reputation of buying people food. And what the leader of the group said was, uh, we're going to pick up the tab for the food, but order as if it were your own money. 
And I think that's a good principle for us to be thinking about, that if, when it comes to discretionary things, you know, ask about it. If it were my own money, do I really need this? And I'm just going to leave it up to staff to make that judgment. I'm not going to try to drag any instance out. But I, I think that that's a good thing to keep in the back of our minds. And, you know, some of the stuff there where there's discretion on, I think, is, is in the number and types of workshops that we do. I think we have to cover everything that we're doing. But, you know, I mean, if, if I'm going to just say this to the people who are you know, ultimately footing the bill by paying the fee, I mean, if you feel that the staff here is offering too much in an area to support you, then speak up and say what it is you think ought to be reduced. Because I've heard complaints, but what I haven't heard is um, specific things they want dropped. And I know that, like, you know, I can look at it. I was asked by one person, well, does there really need to be a, a morning meeting and an evening meeting for the same topic, even if it's for the landlords? Okay, and, you know, I, I've been vice chair of the downtown uh, Old Mountain View Neighborhood Association for 15 years, and I can tell you that in working with business people, some people absolutely insist you meet with them during the day, and some absolutely insist you meet with them with the night. And, you know, it, I can believe that it could be that this, even if it costs more, this is what somebody might want. But I don't know if nobody comes up and says it. So come up and say it, and then we can talk about it. But that's how we should be making these, these decisions. So anyway, as committee member Balch said, um, I'm supportive of the budget for this year. Um, and just with those ideas to put in the back of the mind for future guidance. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member Keating. Thank you. So I appreciate and substantially support the uh, comments from the prior speakers. And it will be interesting to see uh, cost estimates or consider that. Um, there's one thing I'd like to add to the idea of uh, what will things cost. Some of the actions we take are not discretionary. Uh, over the years, uh, our administration of the CSFRA uh, has evolved. And you know, like peeling an onion, uh, circumstances changing. I mean, who thought we'd ever see a, a you know the COVID situation? But we did. Um, and so things have evolved. And so you know, over a year ago, we realized that concessions were not compatible with the AGA requirements of the CSFRA. And so we had to take action to change that. <clears throat> and then, as we're all aware. Um, Utility, the RUBS billing system with its monthly changes are not compatible with the CSFRA requirement or statement that utilities are included in the rent. So there again, we're having to make change. Um, so it's still good to, you know, no matter if something is required or discretionary, it's good to know costs. But I just want to point out that some of the changes we've made are to, uh, remain legal with our evolving and closer reading of the CSFRA, and so they are not discretionary. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Chair? In that case, uh, I will move, to, I'm going to make the motion now, then. Okay, I can defer to Robert first. Yeah, I mean, I, I wanted to, one of the things that committee member Balch said that really resonated with me is, you know, finding out the fiscal impact of our decisions. I mean, when they send out those booklets when it's time to vote, I mean, they always put in their fiscal impact of this action. And I always look at that when I'm making a decision about taxes and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm not looking to raise the, fees higher by doing it, extensive additional analysis. But I really think it's good to get that info. Thank you. And now I'll. OK, then. 
I will move to adopt a resolution of the Rental Housing Committee of Mountain View approving the fiscal year 2024-25 budgets for the Community Stabilization and Fair Rent Act and the Mobile Home Rent Stabilization Ordinance and establishing the rental housing fee and space rental fee for fiscal year 2024-25 to be read and title only for the reading waived. Committee Member Cox, do you mind un unmoving? Okay, perfect. All right. We do. Uh, Member Rosas? I mainly had a comment, but. That this is the right time for that. All right, great. Because, <laughs> I mean, I, I understand, yeah, we do have to be fiscally um, savvy and we have to make sure that we are steer headers of the community. In turn, um, I believe that what we, what we have been doing has been very successful, at least that's what I've been hearing from the community, especially the most who have been most affected by this, which is basically the uh, low earners in our city and yes we are definitely getting a lot more uh, more not a lot more but more um, challenges to um, challenges we're getting a little more challenged in terms of um, well, I'll leave it at that. But anyway, what I wanted to say is I think we're on the right track. Uh, we haven't definitely been good steers of the um, all community members. And people are starting to find out what are the rights in the city and what does that mean for them. So um, I just want to say that I will definitely support uh, the budget. And also I want to congratulate the staff because they definitely have done, reached out to the community and specifically the most in need. Um, because it's important for everybody to know your rights, right? I mean, this is why we live in a in a in a city that that is progressing because everybody knows what they need to do. That was my comment. Thanks, Robert. Nope. All right. oh. oh, you didn't want to speak? Yeah, I wanted to speak. I can speak. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, I also wanted to say I really appreciate staff. I think that this is money well spent for the city. And I, when it comes to the amount that we are investing in like people and in staff and expertise, uh, I think that oftentimes you cannot do a one-to-one, -one, like, like this is the value we're getting for the amount spent because a lot of it is a matter of capacity building over time and being able to be ready to, you know, adapt to circumstances and changes in the city. And for people in a complaint-based system, the fact that we have petitions being filed is, in my view, a success, because that means people know uh, what their options are and how to exercise them, because we do not have an enforcement arm otherwise. But in order to be able to handle surges, changes, like new like regulation procedures, we need to have people who are there over time with excess capacity. We can't have people who are being like, run thin or whose only job is managing temp workers over time. I think we, I, I, I see us as doing a a good job as good stewards of the program. And I, I think staff has been great in their jobs over time, helping people to understand how to stay in their homes in the city, which I see as being the, the beautiful part of the CSFRA and MHR. So, but I guess it's now time to vote. Motion passes unanimously. So, yep. All right, we are gonna move on to item 5.2, contract renewal with Gold, Farb, and Lippman, LLP for fiscal year 2024-25. Public comment will occur after the presentation item and committee questions. We invite you to submit a speaker card now if you know you would like to speak on this item during public comment or if you're on Zoom, raise your hand. We will begin with a presentation from staff. Thank you, Chair. All right, we'll begin. Uh, the next two agenda items are contract renewal items for contracts that are above $50,000, which require RHC approval. So the first um, agenda item we'll start with is Goldfarb and Littman. And the purpose of this item is to authorize the division manager or designee to execute an agreement for fiscal year 2024-25 with Goldfarb and Lippman for legal and litigation services. So for the CSFRA, 
we're looking at a total not to exceed amount of $200,000. And for the MHRSO, we're looking at a total not to exceed amount of $65,000. For background, Goldfarb and Littman provides legal counsel and litigation services for the RHC to assist with implementing and administering the CSFRA and MHRSO. And the services that they provide include, again, assisting you all with implementing and administering the programs, providing subject matter expertise, attending the RHC meetings, drafting regulations and staff reports, drafting tentative decisions in cases of petition appeals, assisting with issues and questions um, surrounding implementation of the CSFRA and MHRSO, and also representing the Rental Housing Committee in litigation. And the fiscal impact here for 2024-25 budget includes an up to $200,000 for legal and litigation services for the CSFRA and up to $65,000 for legal and litigation services for the MHRSO. And the recommended action is just that, to authorize the division manager or designee to execute an agreement for fiscal year 2024-25 with Goldfarb and Littman for a total amount for CSFRA services not to exceed $200,000 for legal, uh, which would be up to $150,000 just for legal, sorry, excuse me. And for litigation, that would be um, $50,000. So that would be a total of $200,000. And then also in the same recommendation for the MHRSO, it was to authorize the division manager or designee to execute an agreement for fiscal year 2024-25 for a total amount for the MHRSO not to exceed $65,000. So for legal services, that's 30,000 and litigation up to $35,000. That concludes this, the staff report. Any questions? All right, any questions from the committee? Member Bulch. Yeah, thank you. So questions for staff. Um, can you discuss what sort of competitive bidding provisions are either appropriate or, or not appropriate for the legal services? Um, so back in 2017, I believe, we put an RFP out uh, on behalf of the Rental Housing Committee. Um, they had an opportunity to review all the biddings that came in, and the Rental Housing Committee uh, chose um, to uh, go forth with uh, Gold, Goldfarb. Right, but I mean, is that for all time? What about like 20 years from now or 30 years from now? When would that ever change? I mean, I think that's up to the Rental Housing Committee. Oh, so that's actually in, in our purview to decide if we want to have different representation? Yep. Interesting. Okay, thank you. Um, and then, um, so the, the uh, not to exceed uh, num uh, amounts are broken out separately for the MHRSO and CSFRA. Uh, how are those tracked? Are they, uh, and, and I'm curious about two things. Uh, there is some common time, like when we're here in, in committee. So I'm curious about allocation and then perhaps by different types of petitions. If a petition is received for one versus the other, could you just explain how that is allocated? Yeah, so um, Goldfarb sends us monthly bills and they detail in, in very high detail what type of services they provide and for which one of the budgets. Yeah, can I just add, we have two separate billing matters. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we've, I think we've only had one petition under the MHRSO, so that gets billed to that. Regulations for that get billed to that. Um, time for meetings gets split between the two, unless if we have a meeting that's solely an appeal that may be under the yeah. CSFRA, we would bill that to the CSFRA. And, and, and how, how would this meeting, for example, be allocated? Is there, is there a fixed ratio that is used or is it? We split them just equally. 50, 50. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Member Keating. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask about one of the other splits that was in the presentation, the split between legal services and litigation. And I was just curious, where, which one uh, appeals and the work for appeals, uh, wh where does that go? That's in legal services. Thank you. 
Any further questions? All right, we'll move on to public comment. If you would like to comment on this item, please raise your hand in Zoom or press star nine. All right. Seeing no comments, we'll move on to committee deliberation. Member Bulch. Yeah, thank you. I, I am supportive. Um, I, I do wonder about over long periods of time, 10 years, 15 years, and so on, uh, about being, being diligent to have some sort of a, uh, a competitive process just to ensure that we're accountable to the community. Uh, I think we're, we're getting very good services. Uh, so I don't know what the appropriate time frame is, but I think it's something worth considering just, just to think about five-year, 10-year horizons, that kind of thing. Vice nice Chair. Seeing no other comments. Okay, <laughs> just checking. <laughs> Uh, I move to authorize the division manager or the designee to execute an agreement for fiscal year 2024-25 with Goodfarb Lipman for a total amount for CSFRA services not to exceed $200,000 for legal up to 150 and litigation up to 50 services and authorize the division manager or designee to execute an agreement for fiscal year 2024-25 with Goldfire Lipman for a total amount for MHRSO services not to exceed 65,000 for legal up to 30 and litigation up to 35 services. All right, motion made by Vice Chair Ma, seconded by Member Cox. All right, any, any further comments on that? Uh, all right, I think we are ready to take a vote. Motion passes unanimously. So, the next contract. Okay. Item 5.3, contract renewal with Project Sentinel for fiscal year 2024-25. Public comment will occur after the presentation item and committee questions. We invite you to submit a speaker card now if you know you would like to speak on this item during public comment. We will begin with a presentation from staff. Thank you. All right, so agenda item 5.3 again is the contract for Project Sentinel. So the purpose of this item here is to authorize the division manager or designee to execute an agreement for fiscal year 2024-25 with Project Sentinel for administrative and hearing process services. For the CSFRA, that would be for a total amount not to exceed $180,000. And for the MHRSO, for a total not to exceed amount of $18,000. Project Sentinel provides administrative support services to assist with implementing and administering the CSFRA and MHRSO petition process, including providing administrative support services, deploying and reimbursing facilitators for the pre-hearing settlement conference per process, and deploying and reimbursing hear hearing officers for the petition hearing process. The fiscal impact here, um, for fiscal year 2024-25 budget includes up to $180,000 for administrative and hearing process services for CSFRA and up to $18,000 for administrative and hearing process services for the MHRSO. And the recommendation here, where you'll see the numbers broken out a little bit more, um, is to authorize the division manager does a need to execute an agreement for fiscal year 2024-25 with Project Sentinel for a total amount for CSFRA services not to exceed $180,000 and it's broken down as follows. For administrative support services, that's not to exceed $10,000. For deploying and reimbursement of facilitators, that's not to exceed $10,000. And for the deployment and reimbursement for hearing officers, that's a not to exceed amount of $160,000. And then the next section here is for the MHRSO. And that's for services not to exceed $18,000. And that's broken down with administrative support services not to exceed $1,000. Deploying and reimbursement facilitators not to exceed $2,000. And deploy and reimburse hearing officers not to exceed $15,000. And that concludes the presentation. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the committee? 
Member Cox. Uh, yes, just for my own education. So Project Sentinel uh, manages all the facilitators and hearing officers for this RHC? I mean, Reynolds Rent Stabilization Division, I guess I would say. Yeah, so they deploy and reimburse hearing officers and the facilitators on a continuous basis throughout the year. And who, who does the hiring? Do they do that or does the city do that? Um, so they're officially legally hired through Project Sentinel. Okay. But we have a say in who is onboarded as hearing officers. Okay, thank yeah. you. Member Baltram. Yeah, thank you. I'm uh, just curious, so there's a 10 to 1 ratio of the CSFRA uh, cost and the MHRSO cost. Is that estimated just based on past petition volume of, of being about 10 to 1? Yes, it, it's very highly correlated to the amount of petitions we get for each of the, okay, of, of the thank two you. programs. And then second question, um, just curious to understand how, how, the, how the mechanics work. So there is a, the, for the CSFRA, there is an equivalent cost for admin support and facilitators, but in MHRSO, facilitators are, are twice that cost. Can you just talk about what the, what the reasoning is there? Let me think for a minute. <laughs> You're comparing numbers that I usually don't compare, so that's Sorry, interesting. Yeah, the um, so the facilitators are used for mediation type of services, yeah. and um, the administrative support services are pretty much standard in what Project Sentinel staff is doing, but we ho we anticipate needing facilitators maybe for a couple of petitions that might come in for the uh, mobile home ordinance. Right, but I, I guess what I'm getting at, is there some overhead that, that doesn't scale with the volume? Is, is that why there is a... Yes, there is. A, there okay. is. So there's some baseline. no matter how many petitions and, uh, and come in, on a monthly basis, the staff of Project Sentinel needs to keep track of who to reimburse um, and provide us with an overview of what the costs are on a monthly basis. And that's what the facilitators would do? Or no, do that's what the administrative support does. Right. Facilitators do mediations. Right, and so I'm just trying to understand then why wouldn't, why wouldn't there be a, a fairly, a, a consistent ratio of facilitators to hearing officers in each case um, Right. Oh, so now you're comparing the facilitators well, with the hearing officers, because I thought you compared them to the administrative well, support. Well, service. either way, yeah. the ratio is off. It's like two. Yeah. So I'm just curious. So the ratio between administrative support and facilitators yeah. is not correlated. Okay. Because the administrative support needs to happen no matter what on a monthly basis. So our best guesses for facilitators and hearing officers are based on past experiences okay. and number of petitions. Okay, so, so past experience really yeah. is the answer. Okay, yeah. thank you. Member Keating. Thank you. Um, I'm just curious because, you know, we have these, you know, various not to exceeds in different categories. If you could talk us through what would happen if Project Sentinel found they were going to uh, exceed in one category. Yeah, and that sometimes happens, and it's easy to, I mean, officially we still charge to that item line, but um, we can use up the whole contract, whether that is for one, two, or three categories. But this is a way for us to keep more detailed track of what costs, which services cost what. But if we need more hearing officers and less facilitators, we can compensate for that between the two items. So that's a staff discretion to make that adjustment? It's not a discretion, it's what bills are coming in. Okay. Yeah. Member Cox. Um, I don't know if you can answer this question, but I'll try. <laughs> um, so what I know from reading the literature, right, the hearing officers are like um, lawyers or retired judges. Um, how do you, f what, goes into the decision about how they get their compensation? Is it like 
is it higher based on the number of years they've been doing the job? Is it based on like, well, you are a judge and so you get more than somebody else? Or is it like a flat fee per hour or how? Yeah, so in the past, the Rental Housing Committee has set a schedule for the remuneration of hearing officers and um, facilitators, and it is in our regulations, um, or in a, a definitely in a it, resolution. In a resolution. Yeah, resolution. Um, so the schedule has is based on comparable jurisdictions that also have rent stabilization. Um, it's usually lower than what they can earn on an hourly basis in their regular practices. Um, so most um, of the hearing officers and facilitators um, really um, put their heart and mind into these rent stabilization programs and that's why they offer these services. You can also see that uh, quite a few of them have been retired and this for them is a interesting a way to keep involved in their legal services. But they generally get paid about the same amount per hour, you're saying? All of them get exactly yeah. the exactly same. Exactly the same, yeah. okay, okay, thank you. Uh, when is the next opportunity that we as a body have to meet with the hearing officers? We can definitely put that in place, yeah. I think that sounds like fun. Any further questions? All right, we're going to move on to public comment. Uh, if you would like to comment on this item, please raise your hand on Zoom or hit star nine. Seeing no comments, we'll move on to the deliberation. And I think we have a motion. You ready to read it? Um. I make the motion to authorize the division manager or designee to execute an agreement for fiscal year 2024-25 with Project Sentinel for a total amount of CSFRA services not to exceed $180,000 as follows. Number one, administrative support services not to exceed $10,000. Number two, deploy and reimburse facilitators not to exceed $10,000. And three, deploy and reimburse hearing officers not to exceed $160,000. And for a total amount for the MHRSO services not to exceed $18,000 as follows. Number one, administrative support services not to exceed $1,000. Number two, deploy and reimburse facilitators not to exceed $2,000. And number three, deploy and reimburse hearing officers not to exceed $15,000. All right, motion made by committee member Cox and seconded by Vice Chair Ma. Would anyone like to comment on the motion? All right, time to vote. Motion passes unanimously. We are Zooming. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like being on Zoom. It's because you're speaking so fast. <laughs> Do the chair, I'm, I'm seeing very bad, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, we are now on to item six. So uh, committee staff announcements and updates. Oh, yeah. we, got, we got a few presentations to close this out. Just a few. All right, we'll look at uh, upcoming workshops and help center dates. So, we do still have our virtual office hours that we hold every week on Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, when anyone can join us on Zoom. And some upcoming workshops that we have on June 18th in the afternoon at 2 p.m. We have a utility adjustment petition for landlords that is landlord focused and it is virtual only. And in the evening on June 18th at 6.30, we have a change in utility billing. And that one is going to be tenant focus, which will be hybrid, virtual, and in the Plaza Conference Room next door. And coming up in July on the 11th, we have a rent increase and hardship petition workshop, which will be tenant focused and hybrid, virtual, and in the Community Center Maple Room. Also on July 18th at 2 p.m., we have we have how to lawfully increase rent, and that is landlord focused virtual.
All right. And for the Housing Help Center, I do want to just mention before we get into it that we are closed on the 4th of July. Um, so um, there will not be a help center on that Thursday. Uh, but otherwise, we are available the first and third Thursday of every month. For our help centers, we are in person at our office in 298 Escuela from 1 to 3 p.m. or virtually on Zoom for landlords. And for tenants here, again, closed on 4th of July, the first and third Thursdays as well in person at 298 Escuela. These are from 6 to 8 p.m. Or people can join us on Zoom, add the link there on the screen. And we do have our um, regular assistance that we provide with housing programs, eviction help, rent stabilization um, help. And we also have legal services and other support services available at that help center as well. And I just did want to do a little mention about the summer kickoff event that we had last Saturday at Rangsdorf Park. Uh, it was a, a, a big success. So we had over 30 organizations come out and pass out information to the community. As you can see here, we had a lovely Mickey and Minnie that people could take pictures with. We had story time, blow up balloon animals, um, and all sorts of different crafts and activities and games for families and kids. And we had upwards of, I think, 500 or so community members come through during the day. So uh, this was the third year in a row, so we're hoping for a bigger, better turnout next year. And I'll pass this to committee member, uh, sorry, Chair Brown. Thank you. No, the the uh, kickoff was a lot of fun. I, and it was great to see so many people come out and learn about all the different things that we have to offer as a city. All right. Uh, any further questions or comments from committee members? So no? was it a Saturday, the, the event? I thought it was going to be on Friday. Saturday. It was Saturday on the 8th. On the 8th. Okay. And next year to be on the Saturday again or? Yes, it's on a Saturday every year. We try to do like the first weekend it right after fun. everyone graduates in and, June. Uh, and, and they did have face painting. Yeah, there was face painting. I, I, I asked. I was surprised. Yes, it was I. And glad. <laughs> and breath mints. So many resources. Nope. Uh, all right. Uh, so we're on to the future agenda items. Uh, looking, up, like, looking forward to Thursday, June 27th, so two weeks from now, we have an appeal hearing, and then the, while council is on their break, we will be hard at work with another appeal hearing on July 25th, so look forward to that. Otherwise, any additional comments? No? Then the meeting is adjourned at 7.53 p.m. Uh, the next Red House Committee meeting is scheduled to be held on Thursday, June 27th, 2024 at 7 p.m. Thanks, everybody. Oh, wait.